Hey guys, how's it going? Jay from Wheels VG Addiction here with another repair video. So I have an assortment of Sega Genesis games here on my desk. Got not one, not two, not three, but four copies of Grindstormer, which is a somewhat expensive game. It's about a hundred bucks roughly. Uh, with these, I think I got all of them for roughly around $70, $75 a piece. Uh, because they weren't working and if you know anything about these Sega games specifically tension games the tension boards uh, Tend to go bad and the reason why and I don't have actually yeah, this one is open So this one uh, awesome possum I've had in my non-working Box for roughly a year and I decided to just kind of go in today because I haven't done anything repair related in a couple months now uh, to see if filling in these vias which seems to be the the problem actually fixes the car and it does so I've got this one here this is not the best looking one trust me uh, I believe this is one I'm just gonna keep for one for my collection I, I gotta take a look at my database and see if this is one that I missed I'm pretty sure it is but it looks okay not the best we're gonna try to do a better job today but uh, that works so I'm gonna put that aside this is one that I just did recently and I did a board swap with this here Joe Montana sports talk football uh, Joe Montana 2. This one was a favorite of my father's back in the day. So I got some nostalgia for it, but I have a complete copy of my collection and I actually bought this one specifically to do a board swap. I'll go ahead and open this one up so you guys can see it, but this is the tendon board here. The rest of these, I've got one that I, uh, I took the Great Waldo search. I pulled that out of my collection and uh, did a board swap with that one. So I'll probably try to put uh, the Great Waldo search back at some point. I don't know where my other tension boards are. I got, I should have two others around here somewhere. This is, I think, the first one that I did, and this one is, you know, corroded as shit, so it's really not even worth the time. This one, it just looks awful, and I don't know that I can do much better than, or make it look much better than it actually does right now. So that one's super corroded. It's just going to sit on the side for a while until I maybe decide to fix it one of these days, but I would not want to put a um, $100 game back on that board. So hard driving, the shit game that it is, can go ahead and sit on the side. But what we will do, we'll take a look, a closer look at uh, Awesome Possum. I'll tell you what process I went through, and I'll go ahead and do that on this one. That is in the Joe Montana cart shell. But first, let's take a look at Awesome Possum. I'm, uh, I'm going to go ahead and button that up. Because I, I don't see myself needing to have that outside of the uh, the shell anymore. And while I do that, let's listen to a word from our sponsor. If you're tired of your retro games collecting dust, you need to check out Will's VG Addiction. This channel is a game changer. With 9 out of 10 experts backing his innovative repair techniques, you'll be amazed at how quickly he gets your classics back in action. Even celebrities are raving about his skills. Uh, what are we doing? Who? A VG addiction? Oh, okay, something about repairing video games. You need to look at why they don't work. Donald Trump is responsible. We have intelligence that proves Donald Trump broke all of the games. It's that simple. Now, where's the damn ice cream? Well's video game addiction is where you need to go for repairs entertainment. Uh, he supports trans rights. And by that, I mean transitioning non-working games into working games. Uh, he's taking YouTube by storm, so uh, you're going to want to get in on the ground floor. You know what I'm saying? Years ago, I remember Jay saying something smart to Jada, so I had to smack him. He looked at me, and man, next thing I knew, I had a hot soldering iron right up my ass, and he made me sing a whole Tupac record. Bro, he's fucking hardcore. Fuck that guy. But I respect him. Oh my god! Video game repairs make me so wet. And Jay, your repairs get me gushing like a faucet. Seriously, please return my calls, okay, babe? I really need some of that smush and push time from you. Sure, he might have a bit of a hack reputation, but let's be real, he gets the job done. From hot thumbnails to eye-catching repair methods, Will's got everything you need to revive your gaming nostalgia. Don't miss out on the ultimate repair experience. All right, and we're back with our janky ass setup here. We got our Sega Genesis Model 2. We got Awesome Possum buttoned up and ready to roll. Let's check it out. Maybe turn the sound on too. Oh, there you go. 
classic. All right. I think we'll say good enough there just to keep this moving. Now, let's take Joe Montana 2, which is on the tension board, and show that that does not work. Right? Not even a license screen. So let's get that on the table and get it going. So the first thing we got to do, we got to pull this chip off the board. So I'm going to go ahead and desolder. And then all of these little via points, I'm going to go ahead and use my grinding tool. And I've got a nice thick tip on there. I'm just going to go around those and expose the copper. And then from there, what I'm going to do, and this is super simple, just a little tedious. I'm take some of this wire. This is uh, some thicker gauge wire. And it's just one thick piece like this. You can see that there. So it's not stranded. We're going to stick those through the hole, solder, go on to the other side, do the same. Scrape, scrape, scrape. And we're going to do the scraping first and then uh, just solder both points. And it should get us a working cart. So let's do that right now. Now we're free. Place that off to the side. I'm gonna grab my uh, my little mount here, and we'll go underneath the microscope so we can kind of get a better view. So you can see we got a little bit of chip right here on the board. That wasn't me. It was just like that. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. I mean, you can use other things, but I think this, like I said, this grinding tool is a lifesaver. It really helps uh, take care of big jobs like this, or I should say more tedious jobs like this. It makes it way easier. You can use, I'm sure you can use like a um, fiberglass pen or a, um, an X-Acto knife or whatever it is that you choose, but this just works best for me. So we'll go ahead and do this right now. All right, so let's grind away. So I want all of this mask off here to the best of my ability. Now I know, I know there's going to be some people that cry and complain. Like, oh, you don't have to do all that. Well, I think I do. But you do you. You do it the way you want to do it. So I'll fast forward through this a little bit because this again is kind of tedious and I don't really have a whole lot else to say so here we go. All right, you know what I actually forgot? Forgot to mention one of the most important things. So, I've got some really tiny drill bits here, some very thin drill bits. I could not tell you what size these were. Just get some real thin. So, uh, I want to say maybe this one looks about right. Want to make sure you go through each of these holes. You don't have to put a whole lot of force into it. It'll be really rough with it. Just kind of clear them out so you can get that wire through. Because some of that solder mask actually goes into, for some of these, not all of them, but 
some of that solder mask will make its way inside to uh, these little vias here. We need those clear so we can get our wire through. And I'll just give those a quick dusting with uh, a toothbrush. I'm not going to worry about putting any alcohol or anything like that on it right now. And then we will do the same thing for side two. Minus the drill bit. We don't need that anymore. Now we'll clear the, the other side and, and should give us a nice clean surface. Whoops. Nice clean surface to solder to. And each of the solder points should kind of look like just any other solder point on here after these are cleared and we have a wire through them. So it's not going to look bad. I just... All right, so we are good to go. Again, dust that off. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and spray this down on a paper towel so we can get it fairly clean. A little alcohol. And it should be good. Oop, we missed one. No problem. Take care of that real quick. So this, again, this is totally up to you how you want to do it, but this is how I'm doing it. I'm going to go ahead and preheat my board with my quick 9570W, in case anybody wants to know that, air station here, my hot air station, and then I'm going to... Because this is this is my Amtec flux here, and this stuff is it's cold in my uh, garage right now, and this stuff does not want to come out of this tube unless I heat this little uh, syringe piece up. So as I'm heating everything else, I might as well heat this up, and it should flow very nicely. So I'm just gonna dab a little flux on each one of the spots. You see, it's liquid now; it's starting to come out. Of the uh, the nozzle there so I'll just put a little flux on each one of these little holes here and then I'm gonna grab my wire but first I have to turn on my fume extractor sorry it's gonna be loud I want to breathe the shit in though I'm gonna prep my wire so I'm gonna cut a good amount of this stuff off or uh, the, the shielding here So we want a good amount exposed, about that much or so. And all I'm going to do as we go back under the microscope <clears throat> all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to push this, jab it through each one of these holes so I'll leave just enough on the other side for me to solder to and not lose like 
have the thing fall out basically. So we'll take that, put it through the hole, heat up the soldering point like we're, I don't know, changing the capacitor or something, or soldering the capacitor. Let's find my clipper, wire clipper here. So I'm gonna to try to get that as flush as I possibly can, but I'm gonna to have to go over it again anyway. It's gonna look kinda of, kind of like poo-poo right now. I could probably get a little closer, but I don't wanna I don't wanna break that trace. That's the most important thing. Do not rip the trace. Alright. And we're just gonna go down the line and do that. Then we're gonna go on the other side and solder as well and then clean up uh, the remnants here because like I said, it's not gonna look all that great initially. And when you do that, you'll leave a little bit of solder on the end, just go ahead and clean that off so that way you can get through the next hole. Initially, I was doing a board swap because I didn't want to have to do this. I thought this was going to be a bit more daunting than it actually is, and it's not really that bad. All right, that one does not quite want to go through. The edge of that is kind of bent, so let's try that again. There we go. As I mentioned, I know it looks like shit right now, but we will clean that up. Now I'll say you might be able to get away with doing this without actually using any wire. You might be able to just flood it with solder. I'm not really sure. I haven't tried. I kind of feel like this is a more secure way of doing it. Um, maybe less rework involved in the future. I don't know. This is how I prefer to do it. With my one time of having actually done this before. So if you've got a better technique or you know for sure that you can just flood it with solder and it's all good, let me know.
Oops. We're getting down to about the end there. So that is uh that's good to go on that side now we're gonna go on the other side and clean this up because this looks like ass so again what this entails is we're gonna go over every spot here and move this wire out of the way we're gonna go over every one of these vias with some solder and then at the end on this one uh, that one doesn't look like it went all the way through Dang it. Hold on. I think I fucked that up. Maybe. Yeah, that's, that's connected. That's fine. I'm not seeing that. that side let's push that through just a little bit all right there we go so that's now flooded with solder and the wire sticking out I cut that one just a bit too short that's okay kind of overdoing it there that uh, that doesn't look so hot but that's all right as a okay I'm not gonna clip these until the very end I'm just gonna do the soldering now then I'll clip and then we'll go over them again with some solder and make sure that they don't look like shit Again, this may not be your method of doing it, and if you got a better one, I'm more than uh, more than happy to hear about it. All right, I guess. Yeah, that's all right. So here, right. Let's switch that. Here we can see this kind of looks like shit, right? So all we're going to do is clip. Yeah, that's fine. We'll clip it and then we'll re-solder to kind of flatten it out so it doesn't look like dog shit. We'll just kind of go over it. Just tap it. And we have that hard edge on there.
that one doesn't look so hot but that's all right uh, that's what we call a whole lot of good enough get a little more flux on that I do want to clean that up just ever so slightly Kind of the same thing here. Just tap it, clean it up. So it's a nice little uh, kind of dome shape, I guess. Now I wouldn't say this looks terrible or looks great. What I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go ahead and throw that in ultrasonic cleaner so we can get a really good look at it and then we'll come back. Now while that's going in the interest of saving time, this is uh, the acclaim board here. It permanently says acclaim entertainment there. What game did I get this from? I couldn't even tell you. I'm not too sure, but we're going to go ahead and desolder this. Let me show you that this is actually grindstone. Let me throw this in the old Sager, Sager Genesis. There we go. There's our, it doesn't want to focus. There we go. There's our steam acclaim board there. Let's turn that on and zoom that out. We can see that we've got our grindstormer here. All right. Now I'm going to desolder that. We're going to put it on the other board and make sure that works. And then somebody will have a nice original repaired board. Which would we rather have? I don't know. All right, we're back. This uh, fucking acclaim board. I'm telling you, man, this was a pain in the ass trying to get this uh, this chip off. He had to use some hot air, and it was uh, not not fun. Anyway, so here we have our board. This is what it looks like now. Again, not. I wouldn't say particularly great, not particularly bad either. But, you know, it's an original board, and that might mean something to somebody. I Personally, I, I couldn't care less. I may have to clean some of these little dots up a little bit. They're a little, little on the bumpy side. A little bit there. But the main thing that we want to do is get this chip in here and then get it soldered into the board and test this out to see if it works. Hopefully it does. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't, but... You never know. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and tack. I really don't even necessarily need to tack one side in because the way the pins are, they're kind of like bent and curved like that. So it's going to stick in there pretty good. And that's one of the reasons why it was so hard to get out of the other board is because these pins are super short, but they're curved that way. And um, yeah, it does not make for the easiest removal. So... Let's go ahead and, uh, regardless, tack the one. We'll just put solder all the way down the line there. Or, not solder, but uh, flux, excuse me. Put some flux on all the way down the line. And then we'll tack one pin on each side opposite sides so top left here and then bottom right here go under the microscope and do a little quick drag soldering and this should be easy as fucking pie That was pretty easy. One thing I will say is that the um, the coating, some of the coating on the board, as you can see there, is uh, flaking off a little bit. It's not great. Maybe I should have just left it in the acclaim board. Is that uh, that's not the best.
Not the best. But, you know. So, like I said, this, this board in general was not uh, in the best condition. Stop shaking there. You can see that there's some spots there where the coating is flaked off a little bit. And uh, I don't remember. I should have paid more attention. I don't know if that was before or after I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. But overall, it doesn't look too bad. So, we'll go ahead and clean this up super quick and make sure it works. Give it another round in the ult ultrasonic there, and we'll call it good and call it a night. Wipe those pins off. Like I said, just give it a quick clean. Throw that in the old Sega Genesis. Hopefully, it shit works first time. Hopefully. All right. Moment of truth. Let's zoom out a little bit here. We'll hit the power button. Hopefully, that's a good sign. Yes. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and mute this or at least turn the sound down because it can be a bit grating. This game, the sound on this is not, <laughs> not exactly relaxing to listen to. I don't know. I don't remember if it goes into. Yeah, it does. Okay. So anyway, uh, pretty easy there. It's not really that difficult, not really that time consuming. And I will say that Grindstormer is a game that's pretty sought after. It's a very expensive game. Uh, it, I think more than any other game, this is the one that I see coming up broken. So if this is a game that you want, you want to get it cheap, there you go. That's how you fix it. And again, you may have a better technique. I'm not saying this is exactly how you should do it. So don't take it as gospel. It's a technique that I use. You can adjust it however you want it to make it look better or do less damage to the board, as some people like to point out. Like, But, yeah, whatever. There you go. So now I'm going to throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner and just want to show off this little tiny ultrasonic cleaner I got. This is about 50 bucks. The normal one I use is about five gallons, and being that I'm not home for large periods of time, I don't like filling it up because it's kind of expensive to use it a couple times and throw the water away. So now I got this little one that uses like, I think it's two liters, a liter and a half, something like that. Not very much at all. So I'll go ahead and throw this in here and let that sit for about five minutes while I clean that up. And uh, I just want to mention, this may be the last video that I post for quite some time. I'm in the middle of workups for deployment. So in the next, five months or so I've got maybe two months home and those are not consecutive and then after that go on deployment and transfer to wherever I'm going to transfer so if this is the last one I'll see you guys in a year or so if not I may post something here and there sporadically I don't know we'll see but thanks for watching hope you got some out of this catch you later thanks for tuning into the VG addiction show with Jay I'm a fan of his work but one time I went to Jay's house to play Sega, and I had to use the restroom. There was doo-doo all over the walls. Hot doo-doo butter, just everywhere. Yes, feces. It was everywhere, and it smelled so, so bad.